basically is only controlling the drone using his hand gestures. Um, yeah, we try to make it as intuitive as possible, kind of like if you were to fly for the first time, you could just kind of pick it up and get it. Um, that was kind of the goal for the project, just being really intuitive over the conventional uh, interfaces to, to use a drone like this, such as the iPhone or a joystick controller. This is a project which deals with uh, gastrointestinal endoscopy. What happens is that an endoscopy is basically, it consists of a, um, a small camera that is mounted on a fiber optic cable. The problem with endoscopy is that eight to 10 hours of videos are generated and the doctors have to literally stare at that video for eight to 10 hours and try to look at the polyp. Our job is to basically automate this whole process. Every time a polyp appears, it shows polyp. So as the endoscopy is moving through the intestines, you can actually see it. Our, our team uses the lead motion sensor to uh, detect hand movements. So what it does is it gives us your hand tip positions in space and we developed an algorithm which is able to detect what gesture you're holding up, what sign language gesture you're holding up. So as of now, we've been able to complete the English alphabet and uh, the numbers one to nine. Uh, we hope we can extend it in the future to English words uh, with another device which can probably detect parts of your face as well so that we can combine the two to kind of have an entire sign language app. Uh, in order to get prosthetics out faster to children, uh, the Faculty of Information and, the, and we are partnering with them uh, to produce a rapid 3D scanning and 3D printing process. And we're handling the 3D scanning process. So basically we're using structured light to scan the uh, lower limb and then they can use that model to reconstruct and print out a 3D socket. Our project is a computer vision Lego sorter. Uh, our goal is to sort Lego into designated containers automatically. So we're using the OpenCV library that will take a picture of a piece of Lego and then it's going to extract the features from the image and then go through a machine learning algorithm to identify the identity of the Lego. Then the robotics part of the project will move the Lego to the appropriate container. Gatemate is a mobile application that helps travelers navigate through airports, but also kind of understand their flight information and get up-to-date information about flight statuses. So uh, Gatemate exists on an Android device uh, for versions 4.0 and above. And once a user is logged in, all their list of trips will have been loaded. And upon selecting one of the trips, you load up all the flights that are associated with that trip. To add another trip, it's very easy. You simply state the, the flight number, the, the, depart, the uh, departure date, and you press add. Basically what this project is, is this robot that goes around an environment and creates a floor plan. The challenge with this is that it doesn't already have a map of the location that it's in, so it has to create this on the fly while also figuring out where it is in this map. Uh, and so as it moves around an environment, it's generating maps. Uh, and this map here, white pixels are uh, what are known, uh, known to be free or obstacle free. Uh, black locations are actual obstacles, and then gray locations are uh, unknown locations. Well, um, this is an interactive table, and our project is basically implementing a multi-user applications. Let's say we are doing a design meeting, and we want to sort through all the design alternatives. I, if I'm a product manager, sometimes I might say, okay, you know what, I don't really like this. Um, I'm going to make a mark on this picture whichever bets you want that you might be interested and just click it and it'll show the bigger picture version of it. Our project is a customizable home automation kit. We wanted our devices to control each other and actually communicate with each other and completely take out the human component that's manually going there and turning things on and off. We have uh, different use cases where we've created things that are called pairings. We can have a cooling system where you have your temperature sensor and it will do, uh, it will turn your fan on if it's really hot in your room. So we say when the humidity is greater than 20 degrees, we want the fan to turn off. And currently it's really high here, so it turned off. What we are doing is modeling the cardiovascular system and we use transmission lines for modeling it. By using our circuit elements, which we have designed, we basically have been able to figure out what is the pressure pattern along in the cardiovascular system. What, what we, we have the heart over here, so heart is pumping and then this pressure 
propagates down the vessels. If you use the MATLAB, it would take day, two days for, for the answer to come up. But with our own model, it took us 35 seconds. We have spent the last year approximately working on an exoskeleton project. In this case, we chose the arm and we chose to amplify the bicep curling and tricep relaxation motions where you see as I lift up and tense the arm follows me up as I move down it follows me down we have a sensor network which is made up of the sleeve I'm wearing as well as a small circuit on my back now this entire system is run off of a 12 volt battery the system itself weighs less than 1.8 kilograms we can lift 25 pounds on the system in addition to any other strength I can put in which means my lift strength is effectively increased by 25 pounds